In my opinion, the third and final installment in this series is the strongest. The first movie is a classic, but it's so busy setting up the mechanics of the universe that the story doesn't get as much room to breathe. The second movie is so busy cleaning up the ending of the first movie and setting up for this third movie that the primary story doesn't get as much play as it needs. This movie, the third installment, benefits from the sacrifices made in the previous two. Every part of this movie is done better. The romance, the time travel, the bullying, the comedy, and the friendship between Doc and Marty. The change in the friendship between Doc and Marty in particular can be seen to grow between Marty leaving 1955 and arriving in 1885. The 1955 Doc is just excited for another opportunity to run a time travel experiment, where an 1885 Doc is excited to see his friend again. Last week I talked about how the plot holes make sense to the people living in that universe. One of those holes that always stood out to me is how 1885 Doc has no memory of dressing Marty for the trip back, and is surprised to see how ridiculously Marty is dressed. As I've learned more about history, I've found out that this is actually based on a fairly common problem in historical studies. No matter when you look in history, how they view the past has more to do with their present than the actual past. All through history, stories have been written about the past. Sometimes, there are even novels or forgeries written as though they take place in the past. Invariably, a good forgery will convince the people at the time it's created, but then in the next generation or two the conventions that were not practiced at the time forged will invariably be seen as obviously belonging to the time of the forged. Marty's clothes were exactly what 1950s culture thought people in the Old West dressed like. Then the people that appeared in the rest of the movie were dressed exactly like people in the 1980s thought people in the Old West dressed like. Now when I look at those clothes, they look so stereotypically 80s Western. That doesn't mean that a Western made today would be any better, but it would certainly be stereotypically 2020s. That's one of the things that both convinces me that the Gospels are real, and makes me less committed to an understanding of infallibility and inspiration that requires the text to live up to our modern expectations than some people are. When we look at the Gospels, they fit in very nicely with other first-century documents. There's some room to wonder if they're written in the third quarter or the fourth quarter of the first century, but it fits in well there. Which means, in order to be consistent, the authors of the Gospels would also need to have the biases of the first century. When they spoke about the past, they would speak about it the way other first-century authors and speakers and thinkers would. This bothers some people that want to see the apostles as granted some kind of superpowers when writing their texts. I know that at one time I wanted the text of Scripture to work this way. I didn't think of it as a superpower when I thought that, though. I just thought that non-fiction authors research and then write what's true. Two things persuaded me that that isn't how it works. First, I read more about how history was written in the past. Second, I did more writing of my own. In our own time, there is a television show called The Chosen that's about Jesus and his followers. I like it. I'm a little behind right now, but I like it. I fully expect that in 15 years, I'll look back on it and say it's stereotypically 2020s. As I've been collecting my notes about why I think Matthew was written in Hebrew, they have often included bits and pieces about the authorship of other New Testament books. I've been thinking about writing a novelization of the writing of the New Testament. If I do, it will be very clear to future generations that it belongs to the 2020s. Some people seem to think that we're getting better at conforming historical pieces to their time when we want to. These people think we're on the edge of arriving at the end of stereotyped history. I think that every previous generation that thought that was wrong, so our track record isn't that great on these things. Even so, I think that would be interesting, to get to a place where history was treated in that way. Maybe we will get there, someday.